What's going on coders and welcome to episode 8 of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be learning about the date time items. So there are four distinct classifications for the date time items. You have the date item, you have the date time item, you have the time item, and then finally you have the duration item. So let's take a quick overview of them all now. So starting off, the date item is basically, you can ask a question for your respondent, but the respondent has to answer within a date object format. And a date object in, consists of a month, a day, and then optionally a year. All right, so moving on, we have the date time item. And the date time item is the exact same as the date item. However, you additionally have to include a time as well. So you provide a date, but then you also provide an hour and a minute for the time, and then also AM or PM. All right, and now we have the time item, which is, again, the same as the date time item. However, we, we are not including the date. So we're only asking for a specific time, and it has to be an hour, a minute, an a.m. or p.m. Finally, we have the duration item, which is neither a date nor a time. It's rather a, it's a, it's rather a length of time. So these questions or these items are great for questions that ask how long did something take, and then you would provide an hours, a minutes, and a seconds. All right, so we're going to see an example of all of these in the code, but first, let's go check out the methods for today. So I have picked out three of my top methods, and they are as insert type here item. Again, we've seen this method used multiple times in the previous episodes. Basically, this is used for if you have a generic item and you want to typecast that into a specific item, all you would need to do is put the type right where it says insert type here. So if you had a time item, all you would need to say is as time item. Similarly, for the next method, as insert type here item, all you would need to do is insert your type there and that would add that item to the screen. So it would you would say something like add date time item and then that would add it to the form. All right, and now our last method is set includes year. This is a specific method for both the date and the date time uh, class. So we're gonna see an example of all of these methods in the code coming up. So let's dive right in and get to work. Here in the code editor, we are getting an instance of the form that we have been working on for the past couple of videos, and then storing that in a variable called form. So let's go check out that form right now. We can see that we only have one item on display within our form, and that is a date item. Right here, it's asking the question, what day were you born? And then the respondent can input a month, a day, and then finally a year. Or they could just really just click on this little calendar icon and then get the calendar view where they could select a day, say June 4th, and then it will automatically input that date for them. All right, let's just go into our form editor and verify that it is indeed a date item. So we can see that right here. And this is the date item, a uh, little drop down right here. All right, so now let's say that we wanted to get an, or we want to get access to this item right here programmatically within the app script code editor. Well, to do that, we need to first access our form and we need to get the item in and of itself. So again, we've seen this in plenty of our uh, prior episodes. One way you could do it is to say get items. You could also say get item by ID, that's totally fine, but we're going to showcase this one right here. We'll access the zeroth index because again, there's only one item on the form currently. And then to typecast your generic item, because again, this returns a generic item, to typecast that into a more specific item, such as a date item, you would use the method as date item. And then again, once you have now a date item, you can access more of the specific methods applicable to a date item, such as is or such as includes year. So this is going to uh, return for us a Boolean, either true or false. So let me just console log that just to make sure that we are doing everything correctly and as intended. If I hit the run button now, we can see that it ran with no error. So that is a good sign. Let's go now into our logs. And if we uh, wait for the logs like we normally have to do, And 
And there we go. So it says true. So this form or this item or this date item rather includes a year. And then we can verify that by looking again at our item in and of itself. We can see again with date items and date time items, they do not have to include a year, but this one indeed does. And that is why we got the true right here. Alrighty, so let me just comment that out and move on to our very next method, which is adding items to the screen, and specifically date time items. So to do that, we need to get access to our form um, programmatically, again, by typing in form, and then we'll say dot, and then now we can add dirt, uh, we can add certain items to that form. So I'm going to start off with the add date item, and then I'm going to set the title for that as this is a date item. Alrighty, and now just for uh, compl or just for completeness and also swiftness, so that we don't waste too much time, I'm going to copy and paste that four times, and I'm going to now add all of the different types of items that we discussed in the slides. So I'm going to say add now date time item. I'm going to say add time item. And then I'm going to say add duration item. All right, and let me just quickly change the title on all of these. This is a time item. This is a duration item. All right, so let me now save it. And we'll hit the run button. It's running the function now. But it ran successfully, so again, that is a good sign. Let's go back into our form and check it all out right now. So here we go, here are all of the different items, the four items that we just added programmatically to our form. This one is the date item. It is asking for a date, just like this first item right here. This is a date time item, so it's asking for the date and the time, and either AM or PM. All right, so then this is a time item, so this is just the time that it's asking for, not, not the date, just the time. And then finally, we have the duration item, which again is not a date or a time. It's rather a length of time in hours, minutes, and seconds. Alrighty, so let's go back now into our code editor and learn our last method for today, and that is set includes year. So if you remember, these, this date item and this date time item, both of these uh, require you to put in a year as well, but that's actually a require, or that's actually an optional thing that you need to add. And the way to make it optional is to uh, first let's add a date item to the screen or to the form, and then the way to make it optional that year to make that year optional is to go down and select this method right here: set includes year. By default, it is true, but we can override that and say false. Alrighty, so if we now hit the save button, hit the run button, it's running the function, everything ran successfully, let's go back into our form, reload the page, and here we go. Here is the date item that we just added, except for there is no year that you have to input as well. It's just the month and the date. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, fairly simple as is. These methods are just one-liners, but I hope you learned something. And again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.